of these bugs can kill you. The other is completely harmless. Can you tell which is which? I'm in a swamp in North Carolina searching for some of its hidden secrets with the Wildlife Brothers. This habitat is absolutely insane and we've already found some of the top tier creatures this environment has to offer. But while we were hiking onto another trail, Harrison spotted something incredible. Oh dude, wait, box elders? Uh, let me see. They look like them. Wait, no, no, the body's wrong. What is that? That is- Oh, wait, kissing bugs? That's an assassin bug. Those are kissing bugs. Holy smokes. All right, you want me to get him up? Yeah, you guys let's got uh. Kissing bugs? We got kissing bugs mating. No way. All right, come here, you. Whoa. I actually mis ID'd this guy on the catch. Now that I have a better look at him, this is not, in fact, a kissing bug. It is too small. This is actually a bee assassin. Common little and pretty much harmless insect predator. These guys will be out here hunting ants, bees, wasps. They're pretty much specialized on hymenopterans. Definitely a cool little insect, though. Assassin bugs live all around us. These insect predators have painful offensive bites, but usually keep to themselves. Except for one group that has made a name for themselves across the southern US and Central America. The kissing bugs. And due to the deadly pathogen they carry, they've put targets on the backs of many large assassin bug species. As you saw just a minute ago, even people like me who are experienced seeing and identifying insects can occasionally misidentify harmless assassins for kissing bugs, so it's important to know how to identify them. And it just so happens that later in this exact same hike, Harrison made another startling discovery, this one a little bit more accurately dangerous. Spencer, got an so, assassin bug. Assassin? Yeah. What kind? Not sure. It could be... Could be our kissing bug. Let me see. Uh, let me take a look. That is an assassin. Ooh, he's big. Um, look at the wasp right here, too. Wasp. Come here, buddy. Look at that. We don't actually need this guy right now. <laughs> that, let me see. Um, yeah, he has a characteristic cone nose. I bet you that's a kissing bug. That is so cool. Right, so what I got here is actually a container with our little bee assassin from earlier. I misidentified him initially as a kissing bug and you can see why. Take a look at this assassin bug and its coloration compared to the kissing bug. Deep black body and even on the abdomen, they have that flared abdomen characteristic of a lot of assassin bugs that ridging is bright orangish red. Now that we've gotten a better look at him, we can really tell that we're looking at a kissing bug. If you look at the back there, you can see right where the thorax, the middle segment, meets the abdomen, the back of the body, there's this little cross or X-shaped pattern. That is very clearly a kissing bug. And all that black and orange checkering along the border of the abdomen, that's another great sign, and a really clear way to tell is to look at the head. Look at the difference in the head shape between the bee assassin and the kissing bug. The kissing bug is what's known as a cone nose, and if you look right at the front of the head, you see that it actually extends out into a little cone. And if I flip him over, just under that cone, you can see the rostrum, the biting mouth part. Now, if you look at the bee assassin here, he has the rostrum like a lot of true bugs, but he doesn't have that extended cone nose. So that's how we know that this is the kissing bug and that is just a look-alike. Now what's crazy about these two guys is you'd think the deadlier one would have the worst bite, but if you're to be bitten by both of these assassin bugs, this one is gonna hurt way more. And the reason I know this is their life strategies are incredibly different. The bee assassin is a predator. It's gonna go after other insects out in the wild and a defensive bite is gonna hurt a lot. The bite of the kissing bug is actually not as painful as the bee assassin because this species has a very different lifestyle. They feed on animals that are much larger than them, warm-blooded animals, and they suck the blood directly from those hosts. So this is a parasitic species. It doesn't want to be noticed because if its bite is too painful, the animal it's feeding on will notice and try and kick it off and it could die. You guys are absolutely creepy. And Evan, if you wanna come in here and take a closer look, oh, yeah. I'm gonna freak you out because you're gonna hear <laughs> just how bizarre this animal's life life strategy is. These guys are usually a pretty pretty secretive animal. They're gonna hide underneath furniture and stuff during the day. They're actually nicknamed the Mexican bed bug. And what they will do is they'll come out while you're sleeping and they'll find a nice soft bit of skin, the corner of your lip 
right by your eyelid, poke that little rostrum into your skin and begin to suck your blood. And they get super, super fat as they feed. And sometimes while they're feeding, they'll poop. And that is where the Chagas disease parasite comes into play. When a potential host animal is itching the bite, that poop gets rubbed into the wound and little tiny holes in your skin are where the protozoan parasite makes its entry. And the thing is, Chagas disease can go for years asymptomatic. So it's a very good idea to check around if you live in this guy's range and see if they're uh, lurking nearby. And the other thing that's really cool about these guys is they have built-in warnings, basically. Yep. If you're a predator thinking about eating one of these insects, the first red flag that you will see is their red coloration. We call those warning colors aposematic coloration. That's when animals have bright colors that stand out from the environment to let predators know that they're potentially dangerous and you shouldn't try and make a meal out of them. And actually, the same thing is true of the bee assassin. Yep, you can see on both of these guys, they both have that bordered coloration on their bodies, very striking against their black overall shell. These aren't really one being a fake. There's, and there's actually a term for that, right? That's right. So this is what we call Mullerian mimicry. That's where two different animals that each have strong defensive capabilities mimic each other so that if a predator sees either one, regardless of what their defense mechanism actually is, the predator instinctively knows to leave them alone. So the bee assassin, looking very similar to the kissing bug, actually protects both species from predation. There are lots of incredible aposematic insects here in North Carolina, the most infamous of which is probably the velvet ant. Right here is an incredible video we did with a giant velvet ant. Hope to see you there. And until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.